Sage, thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. My name is Ruben Arana. I am a passionate educator trained in the field of the arts. This is Worship Word Art, the Sunday painting edition. Thank you so much for being in this broadcast. I absolutely do appreciate you. And I pray that your day has been going fantastically well. All right, so we are going to do All right, we are going to do some painting. We are going to do some painting and talking about the word of God. Big shout out to my sister Kenyatta's in the building. Good to see you, Kenyatta. All right, thank you again, everybody. What we're gonna do is spend a little bit of time in some worship, and then we're gonna spend some time with the with the painting and and prophesying and talking about what it is that the spirit of god wants to say to us this day okay so raquel is in the building what's going on raquel and i see pj awesome great to see you and i see i see marilyn is here as well big shout out to marilyn hey all right all right big shout out to the fam I'm going to do this real quick. Bill Bodacious is here. What's going on, Bill? Great to see you. All right. Big shout out to the bro. Bill Bodacious is in the building. And if you don't mind, of course, sharing, uh, sharing the broadcast and inviting your followers is always appreciated. Okay. Shay is here. Big shout out to Conchella on purpose. Okay. Good to see everybody. Oh, Rebecca's here too. Hey, Rebecca. Kiki. Hey, what's going on, Kiki? Great to see you as well. And Tracy. Hey, or Trice. Hey, great to see you. Great to see you. All right. So I need to do a couple of things uh, before we get started. And oh, man, I don't have my board, so I can't talk about the bit.ly link. But anyway, okay. So I'm going to say some stuff at the beginning and repeat it towards the end of the broadcast, all right? So we have a Worship Word Art event. The retreat is coming up in, uh, in, on Labor Day. So August 31st to, to September 2nd is the Worship Word Art retreat. We're gonna have a fantastic time. I'm super excited about it. Hey, Sky, great to see you. Super excited about it. We are going to, to just worship the Lord and express our love for God through different creative fields, right? And so the way, I, the way I'm tagging it right now is it's going to be like this times 10, right? So the, the ability to, to break that fourth wall, meaning the screen, and actually be able to interact with one another live in the flesh and be able to create our own, our, uh, create an environment of worship with each other. That's going to be absolutely awesome. So if you are interested in being a part of that, if you're interested in being a part of that event, August, 2nd, uh, August 31st to September 2nd in Atlanta, Georgia, make sure you sign up on the bit.ly link. The bit.ly link is bit.ly slash WWA 2018 retreat, right? bit.ly WWA 2018 retreat. And all lowercase, right? Bitly links are case sensitive. So it's all lowercase. And then you can go ahead and uh, sign that up. And we are gonna send you the information that you're gonna need for the first wave, right? We got some early, early bird specials coming on. And so as soon as you sign up, then we're gonna get you that information. Okay, so that's the first thing. Hotlanta, hey, that's what's up. All right, now here's, this, here's the next thing. 
This is the next one. All right. <laughs> I messed up. I messed up. I made a I made a rookie mistake that I'm working on getting myself out of. So uh, last week, I think a few days ago, we had a lot of hey Jen, great to see you. We had we we had an awesome man. Oh yeah, we had an awesome time in prophetic exercise, right? So we were we were dealing with mental health issues and physical issues and and you know back pain and foot pain and and uh, you know uterus and all of that kind of stuff so we were uh, you know depression and mental mental cloudiness all that good stuff right and here's where I messed up I didn't directly ask for an offering, right? I did not directly guide us towards an offering. And I, rec and, and I recognized what I did. Here's what I did wrong. I recognized here's what I did wrong. The mistake I made was I wanted, and this is that still that dealing with that insecurity part, Oh my goodness! Look, Tommy Norman is in the building. Bra, bra, bra. What's going on, sis? Big shout out to Tommy Norman. All right, make sure you tap on her, uh, her name. Give her a strong follow. I don't know if she's in here by accident, though. Are you are you here on purpose? <laughs> Big shout out to Tommy Norman. Uh, she was actually in the book. She's in the in the first worship word art book. Okay. Anyway, so I made the mistake of here. The, the mistake I made was waiting for a prompt, right? Because I recognized that this is after some time of reflection. I was like, Lord, what, what, you know, something went wrong. I don't know how to explain it. What, can, you, can you give me some insight on what I did or better yet, what I didn't do? And what happened was I was waiting for a prompt. I was waiting for, it to, for a situation where, where Similar to what happened a few weeks ago, uh, waiting for somebody else to say, hey, we should sow a seed into this, right? And, and the Spirit of God convicted me with that. I was like, he said that you're being, you're being childish if you're just going to wait for other people to guide you to it. And I need to take your training wheels off because the environment that you were in when we were doing the back healings and, and the, the, the back healings and the foot healings and the, and the mental healings and all of that, the environment that you were in, it was, it was totally acceptable for you to, to raise up an offering, right? Totally acceptable but you didn't raise up an offering because nobody said it. Nobody said you should raise up an offering. And that's your mistake, right? Yeah, exactly. I was waiting on somebody else to validate. And you know why? Let me go a little bit deeper into myself, right? Because if somebody else validates the offering, then I'm, then I'm like, it's not my fault if somebody gets mad, right? Then I can, I can sit back and be like, hey, 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 somebody else uh, asked for an offering. I was just following instructions, right? You're, you can't blame me now, right? And so, oh, man, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, the, I'm feeling like, the, like the tingles in, my, in the back of my hair just talking about it. And, I, and I, that's not growth. And that's not maturity, right? I can't keep waiting for other people to to bring it up before I do, uh, or, or bring it up so that I do, right? So, so, yeah, so I repented to the Lord. I was like, it's, it's, it's grown-up time. It's grown-up time. So, you know, don't, don't hem and haw, and I'm not going to hem and haw. I'm not going to hem and haw. So, 
I'm going to, I'm going to do this. This is, this is an offering uh, for if you've, been, if you've been watching the scopes in the last week or so, right? You have seen miracle upon miracle, right? And again, yo, make sure you follow Tommy Norman because uh, low key, I, Tommy, I don't, I've never said this to you publicly, right? I've never said this to the, uh, never said this to you publicly, uh, but low key, like I'm really inspired that that she's out there talking about healing, right? She 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 spends a lot of her broadcast dealing with healing. And 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 low key, like I'm really inspired by that. And one of the things that happened when when God transitioned worship word art into into more healing through painting, right? You know, I, I would actually think, I would think about Tommy, right? I would be thinking about Tommy when, when, when we would do healing sessions. And, and so I want to just continue to encourage you to, 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 to press on because I know, you've been, I know you've been doing this, you know, much longer than I have, of course, but but I do believe sometimes there are attacks when we want to talk about faith healing, right? Talking about faith healing is going to come with people who, who want to attack or, or entities that want to squash that or squelch that, right? So right now, in the name of Yeshua, we thank you, Lord. We ask that you continue to uh, pour an extra strength of grace over Tommy Norman as she continues to minister and continues to talk about the power of healing, the immediate power of healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, uh, for Sister Tommy as she continues to minister to the people. All right. So, so yeah, so in the, in the last few weeks, Things like let me let me let me let me share brief testimony type of thing, right? So so things like be, people being saved, right? Salvation without without the formal the quote unquote formal call for salvation, you know, people who have been be, uh, are accepting Christ in a moment of silence, in a moment of reflection. Uh, there were people that were were grabbing onto healing. Before I turned around to start drawing, remember that lady, right? So, so there was that there was a, a one broadcast where where the environment was already ripe for healing, and I turned around, you know, I start to draw. I turned around, and she said, "I'm I'm already healed," like like and not and not like you know, not like prophetically healed, like in the future, like she was she wasn't like claiming healing. She, in the broadcast, said, oh, my God, my foot. Was it the foot? I can't remember if it was the foot or not. But she was like, my foot is, is, is already better before we even got started. And, you know, those kind of things, there is a level of immediacy that's happening uh, through the broadcast. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely awesome. And so one of the things I've been saying is, like, the Lord is spoiling us, Right. What's going on, Deb? Great to see you. All right, the Lord is spoiling us because whenever we do something that 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 pertains to healing, I'm expecting I'm expecting immediate results. Right, I'm expecting somebody to be healed, not only during the broadcast, but probably even before we even start. Right, what's going on, Coco? Big shout out to Coco. And so, what, oh, you know what? I might need a better word. What's a better word than spoiling, right? Is there, because being spoiled has a negative connotation, right? So what's, what's better than being spoiled? Like, there's a, like, expectancy. Um, yeah, hey, Niles here. Yes, yes. So, she, uh, no, he, he, he accepted Christ as well, right? Um, fa favored, pampered. I don't know. I, that doesn't sound manly enough, right? I need I need a manly term. <laughs> I'm being pampered by the Lord. I was like, eh. <laughs> I 
I don't know. I don't know. So, but yeah, we're, we're, being, we're being spoiled because, because healing is happening very, very quickly. And adorn, my God. My God, adorn. Who I like that. I like the sound of that one. We are being adorned by the Lord throughout the broadcast. Even before, even before, you know, a technical uh, call for healing is being is happening, the Lord is adorning us and people are being healed immediately. Right? Oh, the phone call. Oh my God, the phone call. Remember the uh uh, I don't know if she, I, I don't know if she's here or not, but remember the other lady who 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 got a call during the broadcast, right? She got a call during the broadcast, and she got a raise, like she got a like a bump up in raise, and it was it was like seconds before we started talking about raising and raises and promotion, right? So like before we even start talking about it, she got a call during the broadcast that she's that she was re receiving a raise a promotion uh for her job it was absolutely phenomenal so so with that level of 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 back foundational work right with that level of authority i'm calling for uh, i mean i want to do this again at the end of the broadcast but if you If you missed an opportunity to sow a seed and attach yourself to this ministry, to sow a, a hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, to sow a seed into this ministry, to connect yourself uh, by, by, by an offering to what is going on in this ministry, through my negligence, for, through, 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 through no fault on your own, through my own negligence, I did not give you an opportunity to connect to the ministry through a, and connect to, the, to this flow that's happening. So the number is 69, right? And I know, I know, I know in the world system, 69 is, is, a, is an awkward number. And, and I, was asking, I was asking God, I was like, ah, oh, Lord, do you want me to do 69? That's, a, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's an awkward number, Lord. And so I was like, can I do 68? You know, can I do 68? Because then 6 and 8, you know, is, is no, 6 and 8, number for man and new beginning. So a man's new beginning. And I was like, no. Can I do 70? No. The number I need you to uh, present to the people is 69. So... Uh, so six, of course, is the number for man, but nine, spiritually speaking, biblically speaking, is the is is the is the number for 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 finalness, right? So, in a in a sense, like nine is the last number before you recycle all the other numbers, right? So nine is the last one. Every, everything after nine is a repetition of all the other numbers. So, so the Lord was telling me that this is a seed offering, a connection of you being finalized. Oh, come on. Yo, okay. So you being finalized, right? So what I'm, what, what I'm, what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for are... 10 people, right, 10 people to sow a seed of $69, right? Oh, man, I'm, I'm already feeling, I'm already feeling more comfortable with this. This is dope. This is dope because I know I'm in the flow of what God wants me to do. So I'm, I'm, yeah, okay, I'm excited. I'm excited, right? So I'm looking for 10 people to, <laughs> right, 10 people to sow a seed of $69. Now, you can also do any kind of derivative of that, right? Any kind of derivative of that. So if you feel led to sow a seed of $6.90, go ahead and do that, right? $6.90, hey, go ahead and do that. 
$69, go ahead and do that. If you can, if you can, if you can jump to $690, because I, I know some people can. So if you, it's not going to happen until I ask. So if you are able to do $690, uh, you can sow into, the, uh, sow into the ministry for that amount as well. Uh, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. So you can go directly to the PayPal link, right? The PayPal link is in my bio, and uh, it was just placed right there. So six, uh, I'm sorry, PayPal is paypal.me slash Arana Rubin. That's the PayPal link. And if you want to do cash app, it's the dollar sign A R, I mean, sorry, the dollar sign R for Rubin and then Arana, A R A N A. So that's the, that's the cash app if you want to give through that way. If you want to go through the PayPal, it's in the bio and it's just been placed in there. Right. No, six, not 99. $6.90. $69 and $690, right? So whatever, whatever you're feeling led to, uh, to give according to the Spirit of God. Uh, you know what to? You know what to? If you want to break it down into a fraction of that, what's, what would be a fraction of that? Um, uh, 60, uh, so that would be 30, 34 and a half. So if you want to do... $34.50, right? So that's half of the 69. So if it could be, if it could be, you know, a derivative of that, go ahead and do that. I know, the math, the math, yo, the math. All right? So, uh, yeah, so 30, $34. <laughs> $34.50. All right, so let's go ahead and start painting. And we this is going to be a harsh and convicting word. I think that might have been why God wanted me to do this at the, you know, ask for the money at the beginning, because this is not going to be, this is not going to be pleasant, all right? The Lord is coming, and we're going to come from Ezekiel. Uh, and Ezekiel, Ezekiel is a great prophet. The book of Ezekiel is definitely one you want to check out. Uh, I'm going to be coming from chapter 14. But Ezekiel, yes, it does look like a mountain, exactly, right? Uh, Ezekiel is the, is the prophet that, remember, for those of you who don't know, uh, the, the prophet that spoke to the wind, I mean, spoke the wind and spoke to the dry bones, and the bones start to come to life, the flesh start to come unto the bones. That's Ezekiel. And so we're going to deal, we're going to deal with, with him. All right. Let's give a few moments of, of, of praise and a few moments of worship. Uh, we thank you, Lord, and, let's, uh, and a few moments of prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Yeshua, we thank you that you are a mighty God. Open up our hearts to receive what you have for us. Open up our minds to receive your, 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 your spirit. Open up our eyes so we can see what you want us to see. Open up our ears so that we can hear what you want us to hear. And open up our mouths so we speak what you want us to speak. Use these hands, Lord God, as we continue to uplift your name. I pray a conviction on any scoffers in the broadcast, any, any, any uh, doubters or, or quote-unquote trolls or gnomes or anybody else. I pray they are convicted to stay in the broadcast, right? Allow them, you know, it, even, if, even if they start speaking things that are, are contrary, let them stay. Let, let technical issues happen so they can't leave the broadcast. Let them stay, be convicted to be arrested in the spirit, to stay right where they are so that they can listen to the complete message of, of, of the Lord. Amen. What an awesome God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are awesome, God. You are fantastic, Lord. You are absolutely fantastic. And we worship and adore you. You are worthy, God. 
you are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. Hallelujah. One of the greatest revelations that we that we have received through these broadcasts is that we want our hearts to get closer to the Lord. So that's how we worship. When we worship God, the focus, the intention is for us to have our hearts drawn closer to him. So if you do that through loud, boisterous singing, then sing. If you do that through frantic, kinetic movement and dance, then do that. If you get your heart closer by staying still, then stay still. We do not judge how you express what you do to get your heart closer to God. We've seen it too many times in this broadcast. I've seen it too many times for me to be able to judge your form of expression. God will meet us when our hearts are closer to his. So dance if you need to dance. Be still if you need to be still. Sing and shout and, and all, of those, all of those great forms of expression because your heart is getting closer to the master. Your heart is getting closer to the master. Hallelujah. 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 We are closer to you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Okay, so. Let's read some scripture. Let's read some scripture. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's, let's back up a little bit, too. So Ezekiel was a priest, right, in, in Israel. And this happened uh, right when... Oh, here's a... Oh, I don't know where this towel was. Okay. So, yeah. So right when... Oh, I just missed who that was. Anyway. Okay, so right when... Israel was at their apex of idolatry, right? They were messing up really, really, really badly. And so uh, Ezekiel is a young prophet, or actually he's a young priest, uh, or I guess you could say a priest slash prophet. And he's about 30 years old, and he gets this vision. He gets this um, amazing vision of God's glory, this huge throne with with animals and wheels, uh, four animals on the corners and a, and a wheel and all of that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's this amazing, glorious vision that he sees. And it's the glory of God. And that glory of God is going to leave Israel because of their level of idolatry, their level of, of how much they start to worship and adopt the ways of the Egyptians and the, uh, who was that other one? The Egyptians and, I can't remember the name of the other set of God, uh, the other, the other nation they were, they were falling in love with, right? And one of the gods that they start to idolat start to become idolatrous towards was God, which is kind of an amalgamation of all the evil, all the iniquity wrapped up into one, right? And so God is going to practically wipe them out or at least put them in intense captivity, right? And so... So they are, they are now captives and have been destroyed because of how much idolatry was in their, in their hearts and in the land, right? So that's, that's the setup. That's the, that's the environment that, you're, that we're in. And God is, is fed up and now is, has wiped them out. Everybody's going into exile. And people are still wanting to talk to the priest slash prophet, right? So I'm going to go into chapter 14, and, and let me just add this part real quick.
So, let's look at Ezekiel 14, all right? Yes, exactly, Tanya, exactly. All right, let's look at Ezekiel 14. And we're going to start with, with chapter, verse 1. Then some of the leaders of Israel visited me, and, he, and this is Ezekiel talking, right? So the leaders of Israel came to visit and talk to Ezekiel. And while they were sitting with me, this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, these leaders have set up idols in their hearts. They have embraced things that will make them fall into sin. Why should I listen to their requests? Tell them this is what the sovereign Lord says. The people of Israel have set up idols in their hearts and have fallen into sin. And then they... Okay, wait, wait, okay, all right. I would have paused right there. What version am I reading? Oh, you know what? Let me read a King James because that has a little bit more eloquence to it. Big shout out to King James. All right. KJV. Verse 3, son of man, these men set up idols in their heart and put stumbling block, because that's what I needed, I need this word stumbling block, uh, of their iniquity before their face. Should I, should I inquire of, of, of at all by them? Should I be inquired of at all by them? Right? So here's what's happening. All right, here's what's happening. Israel is in, is in exile. The, the Babylonians have come and captured Israel. The leaders, uh, church leaders as well, right? The, the leaders of the community, uh, the church leaders and all of them, they have fallen because of the stumbling blocks in their heart. They have fallen in love with the thing that's causing them to fall. You've fallen in love with what's causing you to be in iniquity. And the people of God come to the priest, right? The people of God come to the priest and they say, they inquire, they want to ask Ezekiel some questions so that, that, so that they can understand what it is that God is, is doing. And God, in verse 4, says something that, that, that blew my head off, right? In verse 4, he says, Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, that's the part right there that, that got me right there. That part right there got me. And cometh to the prophet. I Wait, that's, there's even more to that. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to to the multitude of his idols. The Lord is going to answer you through the prophet in accordance to your idols. Because the Lord is so fed up. I know we live in a society that, that you know, it's, it's, skipping through the daisies and tra la 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 and God is all good with anything and everything we do. That is a lie from the pits of hell. God is not happy with anything and everything you do. He is not happy with everything and anything you do. But that scripture 
is reminding us that God can get fed up. And so what happens is people are going to start coming to the prophet and asking them, hey, talk to God about my situation. Talk to the Lord about the things that I love, the things that, I, that I'm connected to. Talk to the Lord about my idols. Because what the heart of man wants to do is get permission from a God representative to continue in their idolatrous ways. I'm going to let that sink in. You know what? I'm not going to let that sink in. I'm going to keep going, right? The people of God are so wrapped up in their idolatrous ways, thinking that it's all good. And so they come to the prophet asking the prophet to validate their behavior. And guess what answers, I guess how the Lord's going to answer. The Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through idols. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. All right. Here's the part that you're not going to be, that people are not going to be comfortable with. Oh, you know what? Let me paint. Let me paint. Let me paint this part right here. Oh, and let me get some more music.
All right, and here's the sucky part. Here's the sucky part. The Lord is going to let you have your stumbling block. The Lord's going to let you keep your idols. And there will be a moment where all of that is going to consume you and burn you up. All of your idols, all of the things that you love, and, the, and, and here's the part that I don't like, right? Here's the part that I don't like. The part I don't like is that the Lord is going to use a prophet to let you know that. The Spirit of God is going to, you're going to come to, you're going to come to a prophet. You're going to come to somebody like me and be like, um, yo, I'm in this, I'm in this, uh, I really like this guy. I really like this girl. And we're, we're, we're hooking up, right? We're hooking up. We're, it's, it's, we're, we're having a great time. Yo, you know, you know how it is, right, prophet? You know how it is. You know how it is, right? You got to do it, man. Yo, you know how it is, fam. You know how it is. And the Spirit of God is going to use a prophet to let you know, all right, go right ahead. I mean, he's, he said it right there. He's going to answer you according to your folly. Go right ahead. But then... But let me also let you know that the ways that you are operating in are absolutely detestable and wicked, thus saith the Lord. And you need to turn around and repent for your behavior. I just like to skim a little bit off the top. You know what I mean? Yo, it's tax season, right? I don't got to report all this stuff, right? I just like to operate in predatory lending. Let me gouge some people. Let me let them borrow, uh, you know, $500 and then gouge them so that $500 turns into $1,500 and they're now in more debt. That's usury. The Lord detests usury. Now, I know I'm, that's more of a corporate type of thing, but there might be somebody here watching. I see. I, sometimes I don't know why I'm saying some of the things I'm saying, right, in terms of the examples, but, but you start to get used to the idea of, why did, I just come up, why did I just start talking about usury? There's somebody's watching who works for, who works for uh, you know, one of those instant loan places, you know, one of those payday loan places, Somebody works for one of them and they're wrapped up and putting more people that are desperate, that are hurting in a usury type of environment. Right? That's when usury is when you make a loan to somebody at rates that are too high for them to pay back. And so you essentially owe them for, for years. And if you don't pay, like loan sharks, exactly. And if you don't pay, you know, they take away your, your car, your house, all of that kind of stuff. So you come to the man of God asking for validation for the thing that you love, right? You love that other person, you know? You love waking up to them in the bed, you know, it's hey, what's going on? There's no ring on. There's no ring on no, oh, nobody's finger. There's no ring anywhere, right? What's going on, boo? Right? Can I make you some breakfast? It's all love. And then somebody wants to come to the man of God and say, uh, "Can you bless this for me?" It's like the devil. What? So. Here is, the, here is the interesting part about this, right? Let me, uh, let me see, where are we? So verse 6, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. 
Verse 7, For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which re uh, separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him myself. I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people and ye shall know that I am the Lord. I know we want to talk about God is all love, but if God is all love, he has to be all judgment as well. That has to be another attribute. He is all love, but he's also all judgment. And so... We get ourselves to a place where God is telling us now, this is an expression, this right now is an expression of God's love. These kind of harsh words is God's love. Because the, the fire might not have hit you yet. And so you now have an opportunity to turn and repent. You have time right now. Right now you have time. Hallelujah. But let's go, let's, let's, let, me, let me paint some more real quick. This is the last panel.
Thanks be to God. Right? Thanks be to God. That stumbling block, those things that were a stumbling block to you, there is a way out. There is a transformation that has happened because it is, did you know, I, I, I just remembered this part too. The, uh, does somebody know what scripture that is? That the cross is a stumbling block unto the, unto the Gentiles, right? So what was an idolatrous stumbling block at one point, your heart has been created anew, created me a clean heart and a righteous spirit that happens through your relationship with the Lord, that happens through your relationship with Christ. Created me a clean heart and a right, uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 23. Let me read that real quick, All right? Let me read that real quick. 1 Corinthians. Oh, I forgot. You said 1 Corinthians 1 and 23. Raquel? Okay, 1 and 23. So yeah, uh, there it is. Yes, right. So, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. So it is okay. The Bible says what we talk about, what we preach, who we love, who we believe in is going to be a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Greeks, basically everybody else, right? If you're not a Christian, you're gonna, this is gonna sound crazy, foolish, and, and insane to non-believers. But we preach the cross because it is the only way to salvation. Our heart has now been renewed, regenerated, a clean, a clean heart, has been made and what was a stumbling block before the idols that you worship the Lord is going to burn all of that Look, listen 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 check this check this part out right you're going to come to the prophet and the prophet's going to say you need to repent and turn your ways you're going to be like nah I'm good the prophet's going to say all right go ahead and do your thing now that's he's I'm the prophet will respond in accordance to your folly, right? What's going to happen then is your sins are going to start to consume you. The stumbling block is going to actually make you fall and you will pay, quote unquote, the penalty of continuously living in that sinful manner until it consumes you. But it's not over yet because in that consumption, as long as you have breath in your lungs, in that consumption, now you know what is your issue. That's the whole point of being consumed by your stumbling block because you did not know it had a, you had an issue. Now that you know that that is your issue and it has, been, it has consumed you, you have a much... Uh, Marion is crossing prayer. Okay. All right. I see. Uh, where's Marion? Uh, I don't see her in here right now. Okay. Uh, you are now aware. Thank you. You are now more intimately aware of your issues. And so uh, who, who, who here knows that feeling of not, I guess you could say, for lack of a better term, righteous guilt, Right? where you know, when you think back on what God saved you from, you recognize, oh, snap, you know, I can't, I can't do this because I remember what God saved me from. Uh, uh, think about Paul, right? Remember Paul. Paul was, was a participant. Paul was a participant in the martyrdom of St. Stephen, Deacon Stephen, right? 
he was the one that held the coast while they were stoning Stephen to death. And that, that event for him was a strong conviction to make him feel like, I can't mess up. I owe, I owe God too much. Right? And I don't mean mess up in terms of being perfect. That's not the kind of mess up I mean, right? Because we're all going to mess up. We're all going to mess up. But you're, you're, the, the idea is I owe God way too much because God is continually reminding me what I was brought out of, what grace is about. And so now with a righteous heart, a clean heart that the Lord has given me, that stumbling block has now been put together to the cross. And now we are made whole. We are put back together out of the ashes, out of the ashes of our stumbling block. So even if you don't repent today, And even when you come to me and ask, hey, I want to do this, let this iniquity. And of course, you're not going to come to me. It probably, you, you wouldn't come to a prophet in that way, right? Because you tend to not recognize your sin as sin, right? You might just inquire of the prophets for something else. And the answer the prophet's going to give you is re in relationship to your iniquity. You're not going to really say, you know, I'm shacking up. What should I do? Why are you going to come to me with that? That's, you should know the answer to that question, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm asking God to show you your stumbling block. And I want the Lord to give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Get all the desires of your heart. And then find out which ones are going to be consumed by God's fire. All right, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something a little, a little different. All right. I'm going to do something that's a little different. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking mostly to I'm speaking mostly to the people who are in the Worship Word Art community. If you're in the Worship Word Art Facebook group, I'm going to I'm speaking to you directly. Here's 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 the exercise that we're going to do. I'm going to post the I'm going to post some more instructions in the group, but I'm going to tell you now what it is that we're going to be doing. Here's the exercise that we're going to do. I want you to draw the desires of your heart. I want you to take a sheet of paper, take your iPad, take some crayons, pencils, ink, whatever it is, and I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, what are, what is, what, what, show me the desires of my heart. Take that one sheet of paper. Don't, I don't want a whole booklet, right? Just one sheet of paper, preferably one item, but if you want to draw a few different things on there, that's fine. But I'm going to ask the Lord to show you what your, what your desires are. And I want you to draw it. You need to, that's, that's part of the instruction. If you don't draw it, I'm not going to take it, right? Draw what that is. It can be stick figures, right? It's not, it's not about how well you draw. 
It could be stick figures. But I want you to put down on paper the desires of your heart. And then I want you to send me that, send me that drawing. And I'm going to come in agreement with you and with the Lord about that drawing. And I'm going to draw it myself. So I'm going to redraw what you drew. And we're going to take it to the Lord. And let the Lord work with us. So we can really see ourselves. So that we can see whether or not what we desire is a stumbling block to the Lord. Is what we are desiring something? I shouldn't have probably said it that way. Oh, I shouldn't have said it that way. Because now people are going to try to filter it and try to make sure they draw something that's good. Right? Oh, I shouldn't have said it that way. But you know what? The Spirit of God will convict you. The Spirit of God will convict you and show you your actual desire of your heart, right? And you're not going to try to finagle it and fix it so that it looks good, right? Because you're going to need this help. You're going to need this help. It is way better to know what's a stumbling block than it is to, to, to be in, in some sort of imagination, you know, in, in some sort of fantasy land where you don't know what your stumbling blocks are, right? Okay. So yeah, so that's the instruction for the people who are part of Worship Word Art. You're going to draw what's your desired heart. You're going to email me that or DM or, you know, messenger me that. Right? I reply much faster to that. Take a little, a little picture of it, right? Take a picture of it. Send it to the uh, Facebook messenger and I'm going to draw it and... Uh, we're going to go from there, all right? I'll put some more instructions in the group. And you don't have to make it public, right? I'll put it in the group, but you don't have to respond in the group if you, don't, if you want to keep it to yourself, right? Uh, but just go ahead and send me on, on, Inst on Facebook Messenger. All right, let's talk to two groups of people because I definitely feel salvation needs to be presented here. Repentance and salvation. The first group of people are the people who have never accepted Christ in their life before. If you have recognized that you are falling, you are tripping up, and you recognize the all-consuming fire that is not pleasant, you're feeling that heat and you need a way out. That way out is the cross. Christ died on the cross for your sins. He came on earth, lived a perfect life so he could die on that cross. He shed his blood. He, he was buried. On the third day, he rose again and now sits on the right hand of the Father to make intercession for you and I. If that is you in this moment, if that is you in this broadcast, that needs to accept Christ into his heart for the very first time, put a one in the comment box and we will pray the prayer of salvation and repentance. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay. The second group of people are the people who at some point in their life received the Lord. They, they accepted Christ and they were like, okay, awesome. But then something happened. You fell underneath the weight or the, you tripped up on one of these stumbling blocks. And you recognize, you know what, I'm going the wrong way. I need to turn around. I need to repent. If that is you, and you want to repent and face the Lord, right? You're, you're in a backslidden state. You're, you're, the, the lifestyle that you're living now is unpleasant. 
If that is you, put a two in the comment box and we will pray the prayer of repentance and restoration. You throw it like to turn your back on God. All right. Beloved. Hey, beloved, I remember you. All right. God bless you. Thank you for that. New creature. All right. God bless you. Okay, Marion. Uh, Emily. All right. So I don't, I, I can't write anything down. So Shay or Raquel, could you write down for me? So Emily, Marion, and, and Beloved. Emily, Marion, Ritasha. Yes, okay, awesome. All right, so uh, my intercessors, can we go ahead and start to intercede? As, as we pray, Father God, in the mighty name of Yeshua, uh, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We lift up Marion, we lift up Ritaja, we lift up uh, Emily to you, Lord, and we thank you for your grace and mercy and giving them the time to turn. You are embracing them back into your arms. so that they can have the testimony of how gracious you are. Build them up according to your grace and mercy. We thank you that they have turned around and now they have been restored back into the family. If you agree with that prayer, uh, Emily and Vitaja and, and Miriam, go ahead and type in amen. If you could also include your email, or yes, so that we can stay connected with you. That would be fantastic. All right. Or you can send me an email, thank you. That's awesome, Marion. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to listen, PJ. Thank you, Emily. 